Yo, what's good, Ravens Flock, man? It's Gabe with the Hunter Fan TV, man. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all the videos. Uh, so let's get into it, man. Let's talk about this Ravens first day of free agency that happened yesterday. And I'm just going to get my thoughts on it, man. All right. So first, uh, the Chuck Clark trade becomes official. He's officially a New York Jet. Congratulations to Chuck Clark, man. Um, a leader, green dot wearer, tough player. Um, you know, good around the box. He has some other weaknesses. But overall, good player, solid player. Um, I think that he'll be used um, effectively on the Jets defense is already really good. He's another solid piece on that defense, all right? Ravens get a 2024 seventh round draft pick. Um, I already did a full video on breakdown on Chuck Clark. If you want to check that out on the channel, you can. But pretty much, um, they got what they could, all right? You know, if they didn't get, if they didn't trade him, they were going to cut him. So why not get something for him? All right, cool. Um, next thing, Justice Hill signing, all right? And, and when I ask this question, man, I, I'm, I'm being very serious, you know. I, I need to know if the Ravens flock, are, are we okay, all right? Mentally, are, are, are we all right? Because the Ravens flock is on edge right now, especially on Twitter, right? When Justice Hill signed this deal, I didn't think nothing of it. All right, cool, $2 million a year, ain't nothing crazy. His cap hit will probably be between, like, $1.5 and $2 million, cool. People are losing their minds about this signing on Twitter, uh, talking about the Ravens, they made, made a bad move. Why this? Why that? Okay. Um, I didn't really expect to talk about Justice Hill like that, honestly. So I'll put it like this, okay? Justice Hill is a valuable third running back. Yes, he is. Now, let, let's get into why. J.K. and Gus are both coming off of injuries. So is Justice Hill. Don't, don't get me wrong on that aspect. But J.K. and Gus are both coming off injuries. Running back is a very, very tough and physical position. It's likely that J.K. and Gus might miss games next year. It could very well happen. So, you got Justice Hill here, who the Ravens already know. That's one factor. Two, they like what he does on special teams. All right? I know people are going to say special teams, why are we paying for that? Listen, it's another part of the game. All right? I've said this before. Ask the Eagles about special teams. When Kadarius Coney runs from one side of the field and go all the way back to the other side of the field and puts KC down there at the goal line to score a touchdown. Special teams matters, okay? Um... I just saw people going absolutely crazy about this Justice Hill thing. Like, it's not that big of a deal, right? They were saying, well, why, why, why couldn't we just draft a running back in the in the draft? Um, well, let's let's talk about that, right? Justice Hill right now is probably going to be better than running back that we're going to get that's going to be in the fifth round, okay? And also, their cap hit is not going to be too dissimilar. Running back in the fifth round is probably going to make eight hundred thousand to a million dollars, and Justice Hill cap hit is probably going to be somewhere around one point five, probably, okay? It's not going to make or break this team. It really, I thought it was going to be, okay, cool, we got to hill back, on to the next. But people are, like, disparaging the Ravens about this. Like, listen, there are things that the and signs the Ravens have made that I did not like. Like, like personally, yesterday, right, the Ravens decided not to tender Geno Stone, right? I would have liked to see that because I think Geno Stone is a valuable player who could have been on this team. Now, the Ravens could still get him back, you know, if he doesn't have a, we'll see what his market is. But I would like to see that the Ravens would have tried to do a little, more, little bit more to keep Geno Stone. But they didn't. All right? I didn't like that move. But this Justice Hill thing, I, I just couldn't believe the reactions that was happening to it. Listen, he's a fine player. He's he's a good emergency uh, back. He's a third down back. And he's going to be a special teams ace. That's what he does. All right? And, and if, if, you know, it's nothing concrete, but if the Ravens do move on from a Devin DuVernay, Justice Hill could be your return man, all right? So there are multiple ways that Justice Hill can be used here. And him being signed, I didn't expect it to have any reaction. But the reaction that I saw was kind of crazy. I was really shocked by it. Like, I didn't think people would care that much about Justice Hill getting a new deal with the Ravens. It's not like they paid him $8, 9000000 million. They paid him, uh, was it two years, like $4.2 million or $5 million. Like, he's only going to see... Uh, how can I say this? So look, this year cap it be 1.5. And if it's not, if it's not a good deal for the Ravens next year, they can, they can cut them. It's really not a big deal. You know what I mean? So I was just really surprised by the reaction to the Justice Hill signing. You know, um, it shocked me. So I just want to make sure Ravens flock. Listen, I know we on edge about everything Lamar Jackson related. I get that. And I honestly do. But we don't got to live and die with every signing. All right. Justice Hill getting signed to $2 million cap hit, $1.5 million cap hit. It's not going to make or break this team. It's not going to be the reason if Lamar Jackson is not a Raven. So let's take a deep breath. 
Let's calm down about that one, okay? All right. Now, also, speaking of quarterbacks, Tyler Huntley, he gets the, uh, I think it's called the first writer refusal tender, all right, which I, I hadn't heard of until yesterday. So it's pretty much the same thing as Lamar Jackson, just um, for restricted free agents, okay? So pretty much the Ravens can, um, somebody offers Tyler Huntley, a con Tyler Huntley a contract, the Ravens can match the offer. If they don't match the offer, Tyler Huntley leaves for free, all right, because he was a undrafted free agent, so there's no compensation for the Ravens to get back. I think that's how I think that's how the rule goes. Okay, um, I think the first writer refusal tender is like two point something million dollars. Okay, um, we'll see what happens. So it's a possibility, right? I think the Raven did this video yesterday. And the Ravens could lose both quarterbacks this offseason, which it would be, um, which would be crazy. Be very, very crazy. Uh, so I would like to see Tyler Huntley back in a backup role. I think he's a solid backup quarterback. Um, I don't think he's the Ravens quarterback of the future, even if it is a bridge quarterback, to even if he's a bridge to get to another quarterback. Um, yeah, Tyler Huntley is hes a good backup. He can give you some spot starts here and there, but he's limited in what he can do because of his arm talent. You know, and we don't have to go too far and deep into that. We talked about that plenty during the season. All right. Um, all right. So lastly, right, the big news. As of four o'clock yesterday, teams can officially talk to Lamar Jackson. All right. Um, now, obviously, everything happened with Lamar Jackson going on Twitter, um, airing out Adam Schefter and the reports that he turned out $200 million, not being true. Cool. We already know about all of that. Um, it's really, you know, more the fact that he turned down 133 with the possibility to get to 175. Uh, how I take it is Lamar just doesn't, doesn't want any if, ands, or buts in his contract. If, he, if you say he'll get the money, just tell him he's going to get the money, all right? But let's talk about teams that could offer him, right? The team that's being the most talked about, the team that's emerging the most um, is the Indianapolis Colts, right? Uh, according to all the reports and stuff like that, the Colts are moving money around. They cut Matt Ryan. They they, 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 uh, they traded um, Stephon Gilmore to the Cowboys. So it looks like they're freeing up money. Now, it could just be just to have a regular free agency, or it could be for a big splash at quarterback. Um I mentioned the Colts in the last time I did this video about Lamar Jackson. In the last video I did, I said that they're one of the teams because, look, there's all reports out there they're not in love with the QB class. And at four, there's really nothing to love because Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud are going to go one and two in some order. So that leaves you with Levis, Richardson, and Hendon Hooker. Hendon Hooker's probably going to go late first round, second round kind of guy. So really, Levis and Richard, Richardson excuse me, are up that early in the draft. And if you're not in love with either one of those guys, you can't take them at four, right? So now that pick has no use to them as far as a quarterback goes. So what? Ne so now what? Who is going to play quarterback for the Colts, right? Um, so with them, they have a lot of money. They got talent. They got a good defense. Like, even with Lewis and Stephon Gilmore, I think they still have enough pieces to be a good defense. So they make a lot of sense for a team to try and make a play for Lamar Jackson. Um I think the Ravens will probably match any offer that's out there. There's only a couple teams that, that the Ravens couldn't match, and we talked about these teams before. You know, uh, um, the Bears, they're not going to do it. They, they've committed to Justin Fields. The the Texans, they're not going to do it. Uh, they, they, pretty, they seem pretty set on drafting the QB. Um, and the um, – who am I forgetting? Oh, the Falcons, of course, right? They're not going to do it. They said they was out from the jump, and they proved that. They signed Taylor Heineke. They're back in Desmond Ritter. All moves that seem like – Ain't nothing happening there, okay? So, it kind of leaves me with the same teams we mentioned before. The Colts, Commanders, Lions. And the only team that's really getting, picking up any traction is the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I saw somebody say something funny, though. Like, could you imagine if Baltimore loses their team to the Colts, right? How, how they lost the Baltimore Colts and loses Lamar Jackson to the Colts. That'd be, that'd be something, right? That'd be a big, big uh, historic blow twice. <laughs> but... I do think the Ravens are match offers, okay? Um, and I think that in some thing, some form of fashion, Lamar Jackson will be a Raven next year. Um, I think the Ravens and him can work out a deal. I don't think it's going to be a long-term deal, maybe like a three-year deal where there's more money up front uh, without the if, ands, and buts in the contract. Um, I can see that happening for the team and them selling on that deal and being like, hey, look, this is the contract offer. He'd be like, all right, cool. This is what I wanted from the start, right? So um, for Lamar Jackson... I think that we'll start to hear more as 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 you know the weeks go on, obviously. Uh, but as of day one, it was pretty quiet on of who's talking to him, who's not talking to him. 
it's more rumors about who could be interested still at this point. Um, it's interesting, you know. Um, I really do believe that the NFL owners are, are trying to be, they don't want to be the second team to come in with the big guarantees, right? You know, the Browns being one team leaves it as, oh, this was just one team that did it and it doesn't do with the rest of us, right? But the second team that does it kind of submits it in stone a little bit. So I think that's why we're seeing the market being a little cool right now. But I think it'll heat up. Uh, teams are going to realize that, you know, who Lamar Jackson is. They, they already know who he is. And um, some offers are going to come in for him, all right? Uh, so, yeah, that's what I got to say about Lamar Jackson. Uh, I think last thing I, I want to mention is um, it's not Ravens, but Orlando Brown signed to the Bengals, I find, to be very, very interesting. It seems like the Ravens just can't escape Orlando Brown. Uh, obviously, trading to the Chiefs. The Chiefs and the Ravens kind of had a little rivalry. I won't say it's like that, how they are with the Bengals, but you know, a little rivalry back and forth. Um, he went to the Super Bowl, and now he's playing in the division with the Bengals. Um, you know, his father, Big Zeus, you know, played for the Ravens and played for the Browns. So I guess going to the Bengals is better than going to the Steelers, right? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, interesting signing. He got a lot of money up front. Good for Orlando Brown. I never had no ill will for him. To me, he's always been a guy that wanted to pay left tackle for his father. And obviously, left tackles get paid more money. I, I'm not going to be stupid and say that wasn't in the equation of why he's been so gung-ho on left tackle. Of course he wants the money. Of course he does. But I truly believe he wants to honor his father's legacy as well. So I'm happy for I'm happy for, uh, for Little Zeus, I guess. Orlando Brown Jr. Um, and can't wait to see him twice a year in Cincinnati, man. So that's my thoughts on the Ravens' first day of free agency. Uh, give me your thoughts. Um, we'll talk about it in the comments, man. It's Gabriel. It's on the Fan TV. I'm out.